Welcome everybody, I'm Captain Perry and this is Captain Perry's Adventures in Homestyle Cooking. This show is dedicated to uh, the men who uh, work under the mistaken and false impression that while they're at work, their wives are home slaving in the kitchen. I'm going to tell you how that's something you can avoid. You can cook for yourself. Uh, you can have a lot of fun doing it, and you can teach your boss that she's really that you know that she's really not working that hard after all. So today we're going to talk about uh, cooking broccoli de rave, and if you look here. We have broccoli de rave that we've cut, and I'll tell you that when I bought it, it, was, uh, it had these stems on the bottom of it, and I just cut it uh, right at the label. If you want to prepare these stems, I can show you how to do that, but not today. The object today is to do these things as simply as possible. So broccoli, um, first of all, has a lot of sand in it. And so it has to be bathed. We've already put this broccoli, this beautiful vegetable, in a uh, bath of cold water. And uh, we're going to give it three baths. We're going to dump the water out, and we're going to do that three times. Uh, but when you do that, you can notice, you will notice in your pan that there's a lot of sand uh, in the bottom of the pan. So you want to move this around. There's a lot of sand in the bottom of the pan, and you don't want to be serving that to your guests or eating it yourself. Uh, the other thing I got to tell you about broccoli de rave is broccoli de rave is an acquired taste. A lot of people think they like it and they don't really like it. Uh, and a lot of people don't know how to cook it. We're going to teach you how to cook it South Philly style, the simplest method possible. And we're going to show you that you can uh, make it as, uh, as uh, al dente, which means has a lot of chew to it, or uh, you can make it softer the way I like it. I'm going to cook it a little longer to make it softer. Uh, so, uh, we're going to continue and uh, bathe this and then we'll bring you back to show you step number two. Now, there's not a lot of Italian dishes that don't start with uh, frying garlic in oil. And in order to do that, you're going to have to cut the garlic, obviously. Now, most people who don't know take their knife and they start cutting on a, on a board that's moving and you're going to end up getting hurt. So what we do is just take a paper towel. My friend Joan taught me this. You just wet it, and you put it on your counter, and you put your cutting board on top of it, and now you have a nice, hard, uh, non-movable surface to work on. All right, now, with respect to your knife, do not take a, a knife that's not sharp and try, and try to start cutting with it, otherwise you're gonna also get hurt. Uh, you'll, the knife will slip and it won't Worst of all, it won't do its job. So you get one of these things or something similar, don't spend a lot of money, get a decent knife, take it through the sharpener about five to seven times, get one of these irons, they call them, that takes the edges off, and then you wipe, wipe it clean on your mapine. Now what's a mapine? This is a mapine. This is what we call it. And with the mapine, it's important because if you leave it over here and you go wash your hands and you drip water on the floor, when the boss comes home, or in my case, my admiral comes home, I'm in deep stuff. So keep the mopping with you and you can use this to clean your hands, to wipe the counter, to do everything else, and, uh, and uh, you won't have anybody yelling at you. Now, I'm going to show you how to clean garlic. I've got to put my spectacles on here. How do you hold the knife, by the way? A lot of people do this, never do this, because you change the, uh, the fulcrum on the knife, you're gonna get cut. So bring your hand up to here, maybe one or two fingers above. So I'm, not, I'm gonna make these in large chunks because my uh, animal life doesn't like to have the garlic actually stay in the, uh, in the mix. So 
that's all we're going to do with this and cut it like that and uh, we're, I'll show you that we're going to take this out eventually. Um, also, especially if you're going to leave it in, the ends of garlic have this tough end. You want to cut this off first, I always do, and the reason is you don't want that damn thing in your teeth because that gets in your teeth, then you're going to have to be running around the finding dental floors for your guests. All right, so now what we do is this. First of all, this pot, I inherited this from my dad. These Belgian pots are terrific. They hold the heat and they last for years. This one's probably around 40 years old. And if you look here, you can see uh, that I've covered the bottom of the pot with oil. Never, but never. I don't care what anybody tells you. If you're going to do it my way, you do it this way. Never but never uh, heat the oil first and then put your garlic in. You don't want to do that. The reason is, is because it'll cook so fast and burn and then it'll get a smoky taste. That's okay for some recipes, but not for this. You don't want that. So now we're going to put the, uh, move the pan off the, off the, the uh, burner if you're using gas because you'll have an explosion if the, if the uh, burner doesn't light right away and gas is accumulating under your pan. So now I got it on high heat. I'm going to watch the heat because, as I just said, I don't want to burn this garlic. Um, my uh, admiral, as I said, she doesn't like the garlic left in. So when this just starts to brown but doesn't get dark or toasty, uh, I'm going to take it out. But what I do is I take it out because I like it. And then when I have the finished broccoli de rabe, I sprinkle some of the toasted garlic back on my dish on top of the broccoli de rabe. And uh, it's very delicious. So what you're going to do is uh, just make this uh, start to uh, fry a little bit and we'll show you exactly what that should look like uh, when you're finished with the garlic. So here we go. I think this garlic is probably cooked. Take a good look at this and see this color. It's probably cooked about five, six minutes, and this is the color where I want it. It's not dark and brown, it's just starting to get there. It's a little toasty, and that's the way I like it. So don't get start to get nervous with timing. You got hot oil here. Turn the heat off. Turn it off. That oil's gonna stay hot for a long time. Make sure you have something to hold this iron pot with or you'll burn the skin off your hands. And all I do is I take this out with a slotted spoon so I keep the uh, don't do what I did and drop the oil on your finger. And I take this out because, as I said, now if you left this in, first of all, if you want to smoke your flavor, you want to do something like that, cook it less, it's all a matter of taste. You're going to have to experiment for, to what you like. My theory of cooking is I cook the way I like it, and who doesn't like it can go eat at the diner or McDonald's or, you know, Burgle King or whatever it is, they can go there. It doesn't matter to me. So, now, I had turned the heat off, as I said. I'm going to turn it back on to high. But before I do that, I'm going to tell you something. Whoever tells you that you have to boil broccoli de rabe to tenderize it has no idea what they're talking about. Run from those people. Because I'm going to tell you now, and I'm going to show you when this cooks, that you can cook it as long as you need to and uh, to the tenderness that you want it to be. This is not a boiled dish. This is steamed, and it's the steam, the beautiful steam coming up from this oil and from the water on these, on the broccoli de rabe. Now, as we told you before, I just turned the heat back on. I'm going to bring this pan over here. See what I'm doing here. This is important. Do not drain this now. You've washed it. We've washed this three times. Do not drain it. You need the oil to create, I'm sorry, the water on the leaves to make the steam. So you grab this with your hand, stand back as you're putting a cold, wet thing into hot, burning oil, and listen to what you're going to hear. Hey, there you go. Woo! Now the heat remains high now because you just took the temperature way, way down by putting this cold stuff into that hot oil and you're creating steam. And I think that uh, 
Freddie and Nick, my camera guys, they can see the steam starting to come off of here. And now what you want to do is you got to get some salt. I'm sorry for my back. And you want to get some salt and salt again. It's a matter of taste. It's a matter of what you want. And you don't try to season something all at once. And when you do, when you pour out of the, of the box, put it in your hand first, please. Because if you start pouring, you can't take it out. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. By the way, this is, I want, to, I want you to see this. This is kosher salt. Uh, I'm a sailor, and this and uh, and uh, Stanley, uh, uh, Mr. Fleischman, the uh, sailing rabbi, he would not eat at my house unless I used kosher salt. So, so uh, sailor uh, Fleischman, uh, the rabbi, sailing rabbi, he requires that. So now you got this in here, and the first thing I want to do now to create this steam is put the lid on. Let's get this out of your way, and. We're going to let that start to. Um, we're going to let that start to uh, uh, heat up in there. Now, I'm going to just wait about five seconds. And again, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the top off as I'm doing here. I had that salt on there, and now what I'm, my purpose now is to start bringing the hot oil to the top and mixing it through. Mix the salt through and just do this and you're going to do this five six seven times to get that oil all mixed and you will see that this broccoli drabe, this beautiful product starts to uh, wilt down and the volume of it will be much less uh, as you go along so we're still on high heat we are going to put the lid on and we're going to let this cook uh, and then uh, we'll show you in very quick stages how quick this is and how soon it will be done. All right, so now it's been in there, what, three minutes maybe? And you see that it's, look how beautiful this is, seriously. This is a beautiful vegetable. The smell is great. The steam is working. And uh, as I said, we're going to continue to let this cook. Now, what is the secret as to when this is done? The secret is that uh, I'll show you with a fork. Let me grab a fork real quick here. Here we go. You see, with these heavy stems that I talked about before, uh, you want the fork to be able to go in uh, easily, and this fork does not. As the Italians say, al dente, I mentioned that. They like it crunchy. If you want it crunchy, you cook it less. If you want it soft, the way I make it, uh, you cook it more. And we're going to cook it some more. And because that's the way the Admiral likes it, and if I don't do what the Admiral says, I'm off the ship. So I'll put the lid back on. So I want to tell you something about broccoli de rabe. If you got problems with your constitution, see over here I got some Italian long hots. We're not going to cook them in this show. But you eat a little dish of this, and you maybe put down the Italian long hot with the Italian bread. Let me tell you, you won't have any problems with your constitution at all. Um, Reminds me of my Aunt Josephina. Aunt Josephina was about 75 years old at the time, and she used to ride the bus to uh, where she worked, which was uh, uh, Gnocchi World, you know, Ajax Gnocchi World, and she made it, she made gnocchis over there. So she used to ride the bus back and forth. And uh, there was always this uh, very wealthy lady sitting next to her with her furs and diamonds and pearls, and uh, she had this extravagant perfume. So Aunt Josephina said to her one day, she says, Hey, lady, uh, what's it that the nicest smell you got? It's a very, uh, very nice. And she said, Well, that is Coco Mademoiselle, $5,000 an ounce. Well, Aunt Josephina, she didn't want to be uh, undone, you know, outdone, I should say. So she leaned over, she went, That's a broccoli de rabe, $2.79 a pound. All right, so I guess we're about eight, nine minutes into this. You see the steam is coming up. Uh, this juice, by the way, I want you to see this. This juice is uh, absolutely, uh, I don't think anybody, be, if you're so stupid that you would throw this out, don't watch another show, but this stuff is just absolutely fabulous. And actually this dish starts to taste better 
even after it's been in the refrigerator and will last you at least a week if not more and it's a great side dish or even a main dish. Now, if you look at this, uh, by the way, I keep this plate here so I don't really dirty the counter because the animal doesn't like it when the counter's dirty. Uh, but if you look now, take a look, um, you, can, you can sort of see that this is going in here, but, and some people would say, hey, Captain, stop now. If that's what you like, I would take yours out now, which is what you can do. If you have people with, that want it more al dente, take it out. As far as seasoning goes, you got to taste it. Um, and it's really the only seasoning in this, and mine is salt. There's a lot of people that put, um, that put you know, hot pepper in it, they put olives in it, they put... I don't do that because, for instance, if I put hot pepper in this, the admiral wouldn't need it. So you can put any kind of thing like that, any seasoning on afterwards. And that's what we do. All right, so as I just said, I tasted it. And for my taste, I have to be very careful. I like more salt than Admiral, but and don't pour over the pot. I'm going to put just a little bit more in there. And then again, as I said, you can put all the salt you want on it when you're eating it. So I'm going to stir it again to get that salt. Stir it around. And uh, as I said, I like it soft. Put the lid back on, and in about another minute, we'll be done. So I love it when people uh, who want to learn how to cook, um, they uh, read a recipe, and they throw it, they use the recipe, put the ingredients in, turn it to the right temperature, and then, you know, and they never taste it. And they, so therefore they don't really know what they have. Remember, first of all, I cook to my taste. A recipe is nothing, those recipes have been around since Cleopatra. A recipe is nothing more than um, somebody's opinion of what spices should be put into the uh, uh, food that you're making. So this is done, but as I just said, I'm going to give it a little taste and try not to burn my tongue off. Baby, that's hot. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And it's tender, and we didn't boil it. You boil it, you're going to kill it. And if you kill it, excuse me, my buddy Carol the salad will come down there with her, with her bat and give you a balayage. So, the next thing we have to do is, we're gonna to have to serve it in a nice way. We're gonna uh, put it in the serving bowl. If I'm gonna serve it, I'm gonna take a nice bowl. I'm gonna put the broccoli de rabe in there. <clears throat> now, this wonderful juice, this is actually the best part. Nice crusty Italian bread. We have some wine if you drink, I don't drink, but I don't hold it against anybody. And for those who want garlic, now's the time you could put your hot pepper, you could put anything you want, and I like this crunchy garlic, which is beautiful now. And there, my friends, you have broccoli de rabe. Very easy, maybe 15, 20 minutes to do the whole deal, South Philly style. Before I go, I want to tell you that this show, and every show in this series, Will, to be, will be dedicated in some part to my dear, dear friend, Carol Vassallo. I'm going to be crying. Carol Vassallo. Carol taught me how to cook, and so did all the other great South Philly uh, secretaries down at Ethan Lucas. See you next time. <laughs> Sempre a boca larga da mano de Annie Se te vi que a banda se a boca larga